Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 36, Christmas Memories, with me, Tom, the greatest podcast host in the world, some would say. But, what's that noise? What's the lift? What's that doing? Herr Crowther? What's he got hanging around his neck? Ho, 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 now I have a microphone. yippee ki mumsy lover. As if you didn't think I would be in the Christmas special, Tom. Welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast Live, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 36, Christmas Gaming Memories, with me, George, and as always joined by Tom, Hans Gruber, to my John McLean. How's it going? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Obviously, it's exciting times. Very down exciting here at the market. this week. We find ourselves down at Farmington Market, surrounded, as you can hear, by the great and the good, trapped in front of the Christmas tree where we're hosting the episode, somewhere between Deb's Babs, who's doing a cracking looking um, hog roast. Mm, Although, nice. hmm, Maureen from Acacia Avenue's dog went missing earlier this week, and I'm Ooh. afraid it looks awfully like a <laughs> shaved dog. And on the left, we've got some very, very mulled wine from uh, John at the Wagon. Over there, we've got some. Uh, wonderful carol singers you can obviously hear that musical accompaniment in the background and Tom I didn't know this but uh, before coming down to Farmington uh, Market Square today you told me that a certain someone special is going to be singing something at the choir yeah um, Red Dragon Rias going to be or, or should we so, should we address him Sir Sensei well, Rias we are in a public place we don't want anyone to know Sir Sensei Rias Sir Sensei yeah. Sir Sensei yes <laughs> It is a marvellous uh, rendition of Walking in the Air, the oh. Alla Jones classic from The Snowman. Awesome, and I see over there in the uh, pre-allocated, pre-bought uh, area that we've all had to buy, pre-buy yeah. these spaces for the market square, I see uh, Father Christmas, well, it's not actually Father Christmas, one of his helpers, he's a bit busy this time of year, Tom, he so is, yeah. who's standing in quite eloquently for the big red man himself? Well, the portly gentleman we know as Lord Ponselbury. He's unfortunately sense. not handing out particularly great presents going back to the Victorian times of coal and tangerines for all. Dependent on behaviour, I presume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and this week we've got, seeing as it's a Christmas special, we're going to wheel out someone a little bit different for the bag through the utilisation of the MG Maestro Turbo, from what I hear. Oh, we're going time travelling. Or have you already done it and brought him back? It's probably telling too much, isn't it? Mm. Before we go any further, imagine if this was your first ever episode of uh, the Unofficial Controller podcast. We what a great the, place to jump in. I know. The Christmas special. In the throng of a Christmas market somewhere in Lincolnshire. But question is, we ought to give them a heads up. What's coming up in the news, yeah. Tom? We've got a little bit of news on the future of the Xbox brand. Oh, um, okay. I thought you'd have gone with the headline. No. You're going to save that. Yeah, it's saving that one. Quality saving gaming one. gold. This week, a little bit of something different. We've got a load of things under the tree. And I kicked the mic, but it's very tight down here at Farmer to Market Square. And we're going to decide who's getting these gifts, aren't we? Yeah. And that's how we're going to read their comments out. Because this week, as a Christmas special, we're going to look at everyone's gaming memories, including our own. And after that, we're going to do some listener stingray. And we've got two weeks, because last week we had to shut the bunker down. Go with it. Go with it. Everyone here gathered round has come here yeah. to see Listener Stingray live. live. Yes, we've got a projector. We've put it up on the side of the marquee where we're going to have a barn dance later. It's all working out perfectly. i tell you what. Okay. We should put this on YouTube. Okay. No double readings. Maybe for the, the muscle of the Let me tell glorious you bar stewards. The Zillas have been in contact. Double readings are a thing. <coughs> is that okay? That's okay. In this Christmas special, it's the, yeah. it's the fans, it's the listeners special. Okay. Right, oh. We're having fun. We're down in the middle of Farmerton Market like celebrities. 
So after Let's we, we digress. After after Stingray's boot comes. Well, the, we'll have to clear a way through the throng of the crowd and the surrounding people. We will. We need to get Stingray up here. Not much in there. I feel he's left it all under the tree. Yeah. So there's only a little bit. Not many new releases this week, but a few. And then I'll ask you what you're hoping to play over the festive period. But before we get started, Odders, hold the wheel. What you've been playing? Well, seeing as uh, we've we've been off for a week with the with the plague, Mm. has hit the village quite badly. Decimated. Yeah. Uh, so we've had some time to finish games, really. Finish Death Stranding. Have you? I have. 60 hours in. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Not got as many five-star uh, badges as you, but I'm hoping to catch up. Well, like I say, if Adam the Artist uh, could pull himself together, I'd have a T-shirt that says the man who finishes games. Yeah. Would. Actually, legally, I'm not allowed to say that anymore. Tell no, me, no. Tell me, let's cut straight to the chase. We've got people from Farmerton surrounding us, and we've got listeners on the podcast. They came here for gaming information. They're probably wondering what you thought about Death Stranding. Oh, yeah, it leaves an impression, doesn't it? Was that a good noise, or is that a bad noise? A good noise. Okay. Yeah, I did enjoy it. Let's There's a section in the ending that I've dislike very much Let, let's frame it in the unofficial controller podcast line I'm feeling very celebrity like with all these people around us yeah hi Brian? you alright Brian uh, love leave all there oh love yeah without even a hesitation yeah without hesitation ok without ruining the news game of the year contender oh definitely yeah. contender it does so much um I do think it innovates a lot, like the way it gives you those the freedom to do the deliveries how you wish. Mm. People might see the deliveries as boring, but I think there's actually a lot of challenge there, and it's a, a very new game mechanic. Well, I would say that, like I, you I have don't... a side quest, take this package here in games before, but not to this extent where you've got to really think about what you're doing, plot your route, look at the weather. Um, how are you going to carry this certain load? Whether you you're going to, to use the weather, it? I yeah. looked to the weather. I just cracked on. I did try and avoid it where I could, like did when I was conflict? doing the waypoints. Um, I never actually found conflict that difficult. I never used a waypoint either. I just did you not in a straight line. Yeah, you're damned. You get in my <laughs> way, and I'll sort you out. Fair enough. Yeah, um, there's some great sort of gadgets in there, and towards the end game, the end game is. It's really good. Can I stop you? Yeah. Do you want more wine? No. It I'll smells have, pretty funny. I'll have more wine. More mulled wine. Very mulled wine. Oof. Strong. You don't want too much of that. It smells a bit like vinegar. Um, it yeah. has the same alcohol effect as probably downing a bottle of JD in one go. Mm. So Ish. it might be the solo cast that was actually always <laughs> meant to be. Hi. It's Christmas, you've got to get a little bit merry. You have. Drink and be merry. Yes. Uh, one and all. One and all. Yeah, so overall, it's a, a game of the year contender for me. Really enjoyed it. I'd like to see maybe, we discussed this before the podcast, maybe it stands best as a standalone game and it yeah. never goes back to it. If they bring out a sequel for that. There's nothing left unsaid, unless I'm just a dummy dummy. Yeah, for, for his games, I think it ties everything up really well. Yeah, pretty well um, on it. Why do we need to know more? Yeah, there's a couple of things that I kind of thought, oh, I wonder where that was going or... But nothing Applying much. Applying the same logic, Saving Private Ryan, doing all those gangbuster numbers, it deserves a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Um, so, with finishing that, I've managed to start Luigi's Mansion 3 as well on the Switch um, about 5 hours into that really good palate cleanser for um, from coming from such a massive game like uh, Death Stranding I think Luigi's Mansion is between 15 18 hours Do which is pretty good cheese? Uh, no I'm alright Christmas cheese okay. they're giving it away are they? yeah big blocks for it off no, the back no, of the wagon little tasters oh on yeah. cocktail sticks yeah just so you can see if you classy yeah 
Farmer to market, square yeah. top. Yeah. Proper classic. Really, like, on Luigi's Mansion, it looks a bit like a live action. Not a live action, what am I saying? Like a CGI Pixar movie. Ah, uh, yeah. Really impressive. This like cheese is nice. I see this cheese is <laughs> throwing you off your sound. It has, it right. has. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Really impressed so far. The different levels of the um, hotel, the different floors, they've got like different themes, very Nintendo, sort nice. of have different theme for different floor. There are some of that are like standard, like hotel foyer, basement, um, rooms, mm. and so forth, but then it's getting a bit, little bit, the higher we go, it's getting a bit more interesting. So there's one that's themed on like a castle, one on like a garden greenhouse sort of thing. Sort of thing you see in your average hotel. Oh yeah, yeah, like a castle halfway up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. How far through with that are you? That's I'd a proper Lincolnshire thing to yeah. say. Obviously, when we're out of the bunker, I get a little bit unprofessional. Tom. Mm. Um, so five hours probably is, I don't know a quarter. Just it depends how long it takes me to finish it. Really, I've not had a chance to try the multiplayer. Um, how long's a piece of string? Yeah, you know me. What I don't saying, finish that 30 game. 30 hours, main campaign, job done? No, no, it's only only 15. Oh. Yeah, it's not that long. The original, I think, was only about seven hours long. You're a quarter in. I think about a and quarter. And it's 15 roughly. hours and you've done five. If you go off floors of the hotel, I think there's probably something like... Um, I think you applied the same logic to your completion scale there as you did to the unofficial control on law. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The Pinocchio law. The Pinocchio yeah. law. Um, what have you been playing? Oh, God. Well, sit down. Yeah, I know. I'll bore some of the uh, attended masses. But Give I'll, us your highlights. Okay. Oof. Death Stranding. I went back to that. I like it. I like playing it in the end game. I think it's quite cool. Uh, how, how, have you been... How many of the roads have you finished? Can you literally like drive no. a lot of the map? They're very time-consuming. I'm putting the resources into helping people build the roads but I'm not doing all of it I'll do yeah. two thirds of it no wish. so you play in online mode a lot and I've tended to just keep it offline find it becomes cluttered and takes away that like loneliness feeling of yeah but like, when you finished it and Die Hardman gave you all in the, in the end game of Die Hardman so you better speak to your other port and see if there's something we can do to get here a little bit quicker oh yeah and yeah just walk back in a baronless feature as well Mm. I, told I had a few things. I told I, you to I keep your original hat in Red Dead. I did occasionally turn it. I know you. Make sure you keep the same horse, yeah, same keep hat. The same horse and hat. No problem. So I'll stick to your wording. I tried to give you the same heads up, and you're like, nah. Tom's for the, the visual impression. The visual of, uh, impression Arthur as always Morgan on the taking his last ride on the audio podcast. He Spoilers did for a year old game. Wait, people are only just getting that for this Christmas. <laughs> Oh, mate, imagine playing that for the first time on Christmas. Or imagine. Anyway, what else have we been playing? Death Stranding. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Yeah, the um, like the prequel. Yeah, which... Uh, yes, interesting. So far I've gone in there like John Rambo. <laughs> Uh, and I haven't really found a, an option. Wayne Rambo. Wayne Rambo, yeah. John Wayne's and Rambo's son. Illegitimate son. Yeah. Two men got to this 21st century that can happen. They got together, they had a child. And now he's in action movies. Sounds pretty good. Let me write that down. <laughs> Copyright him. <laughs> Must invite him to the New Year's party. It's a new baby Yoda. Is he? Yeah. Wow. That's sprinkling liberally across the whole show. Million downloads. Yep. Where... What else have I been playing? So that, I feel a little bit disappointed by that. Um, the full game is um, is very good. but it, might seem... I just felt forced to go in all guns blazing because I yeah. couldn't quite work it out. I'm sure I will over time. Uh -huh. It doesn't look like a hard game to probably finish in its completion. The like. listeners are dying to know, though, have you been playing any more Overwatch? Yes, I have. Man, I'm a word. Like I said, I would. Good man. I've been playing that. My opinion hasn't changed. It's still a leaf, but... I said I'd put some more hours in to see if the game develops. You need to get about 100 hours on a character and then it will Is have more. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm a man of a word. I'll put 100 hours into that game. And then it's but going in a layer. I don't get layer. out the back end. Oh, I, I downloaded digitally. 
If I put 100 hours into that game and I still don't like it, I will upload to YouTube a video of me digging a six foot hole, throwing in a copy of Blair and Overwatch. <laughs> My copy of Overwatch. Do you have a physical copy? Uh, oh no, I don't. I don't anymore. No. No. No, I've got a digital. It's always there, ready to be played. Well, I've been see. playing. Also, promised the listeners I would play Firefighter FDNY18 on the PlayStation 2, which is a great game. Been playing a bit of that. Been playing also on the PSP. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Again. Can't Again. Get enough of it. You played some on the Vita? You playing on that? No. Shenmue 3. Oh, how are you getting on with that? Oof. I've, I'm not getting it. I've decided I'm just not getting it. I predicted this. Mm. I it's predicted just I can't. I can't go back to playing like that. I find it quite nice. I've just been. I've my time's been a bit split, <coughs> so I've not been able to dedicate to it. I wanted to give Death Stranding its air. Mm. It needed it. Yeah. And unfortunately, despite delaying it a week or two, <laughs> uh, Shemi Three popped up in a very busy, very yeah. busy month. I'd imagine it's probably not fared that well. I've no. not seen it chart at all. Really? Mm. So that's a worry. Mm. Uh, it's not multi-format, is it? It's on PC and PS4, but I don't think it's currently on Xbox. Is that right? No, it's not. That's a shame. Especially yeah. considering that they re-released two on the original Xbox. Yeah, they did. And they've got the HD collection, I think, uh-huh. as well. One presumes it's coming. Yeah, Sure. It runs on PS4 and PC. The problem is, if he doesn't chart very well and doesn't sell very well, it's, he's going to struggle to finish the, the story, isn't he? Because he said he's wants to do four or five, possibly. I heard five parts. That's a reduction on the 15 he promised when he did it in the Dreamcast magazine. I remember <laughs> reading it. Like an elephant. Overkill. Top, I never forget. Uh, right. We've... What else have I been playing? That's about it. Look, we've got to show off because we've got. Okay, Marcus we've got big audience. People, haven't we? yeah. Well, I think they're ready for the news. Are they? Well, but before the news, oh. let's just do a quick beg. No, no. He, he, he's hap- he, he's the beg's going to happen between the news and the feature. Okay. Let's do All some right. housekeeping. You have got present to open from everybody's favourite console serial killer, Retro Gamer Thomas. There it is. On air opening. I've opened mine because I'm spoiled. Yeah, greedy little pig. I couldn't help myself. What you got? Oh wow! What is it? This. Merry Christmas. Well, you probably need to do a little bit more descriptive because we're on an audio we podcast. Are. Merry Christmas. A card with an Xbox control, Xbox One. Tom, how awesome is he that? He knows you're the Xbox gamer. Oh wow! What you got? An Overwatch sticker, look at that. Oh, mate. Mate. Do you know what I got? I got a Vice City sticker. We'll make sure Retro Thank Gamer Thomas... Thank you very Thomas much, Retro Gamer Thomas and, and family. Farmers in Market Square, that we will upload to our Instagram stories. That is ace. That the pages. Thank you so much. Um, our, our Retro Thomas presents. I feel if I wore the Overwatch logo on my chest like that, it could be like Overwatch man. Uh to be fair you've got one tattooed on your chest in the same location oh, don't tell it would be a little bit weird wouldn't it yeah it's weird in the first place but sticking one on your chest I don't know where you're going to put that Let's see if mum's going to let you put it on the fridge I've just realised when you hold the logo upside down it looks a little like Reaper from Overwatch you know the guy with the hood in there maybe they've been trying to tell you something right from the get go you know you were maybe. for the Overwatch news I have Maybe Thank you very much. I uh, I really like that. Thank you, Retro Game Thomas. Very generous. Of I'm it. sure he's down here in the Market Square, held back by PCSO temp from all the recording gear down here and the lights on the Christmas tree. It would really be like Christmas for Retro Game Thomas if he got his nabs into the electronics down here today. So he's been heartedly restrained. Although he's wearing a Father Christmas hat, that often goes well with a full face mask. <laughs> um, Farmers of the Market Square and loyal listeners at home, we've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up. From Rags to Riches. Sekiro, correct pronunciation, won this year's Game Awards. It's only took us 36 episodes, Tom. It has. (laughs) With From Software's Japanese epic game, much love and praise for its rhythm action style fight game. Um, 
It's probably caused a few smash controllers though, but um, the feeling of completion, I should know, I finished games, you finish is that more game. than worth it. It looks like it's James, quite funny, isn't it? It looks the like start. James has been at the mold wine, as far as the script's concerned. <laughs> yeah. today. I don't know whether the thought of performing in front of thousands live or he said or it. He live. said it was. He was nervous. Oh, I don't blame him. I'm he said he had a. He, have you ever seen? Um, oh, I'll be honest with you. Tom, no, have you? Have you seen? Have I'm you nervous. seen? Final Destination, the horror film. Oh, yeah. About the That's the lad who he doesn't get on. He doesn't get on a plane because he he thinks it's. He sees a vision. As a foreshadowing. I'm foreshadowing. Like, what are you doing? Well, James came to me the other night and he said, I, I, I foreshadowed a, a, a really bad thing. It's going to happen. He says some silly I things. I think he's a silly boy, isn't he? He's mu- I told him what? to go back to bed. And yeah. Mm. We do keep him up all hours watching him watch all sorts of strange things. Anyway, moving on with this headline Phil Spencer reveals his weapon. It's linked, but it's not linked. Microsoft's next generation Xbox is officially called Xbox Series X. Microsoft revealed the name and console design on stage at the Game Awards today. The console itself looks far more like a PC than we've seen from previous Xbox consoles, and Microsoft's trailer provides a brief glimpse at the new design. Have you seen the new design, Tom? I have, I really like have it actually. This? It looks yeah, quite it's cool. Like, yeah. it's, it's almost got that same kind of vibe to it is the 360 did you know when it had its yeah. sort of shrunken waist and that was yeah. very 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 cool when it dropped the console itself is designed to be used in both vertical and horizontal orientations and Microsoft's Xbox chief Phil Spencer promises that it will deliver four times wow. the processing power of their already powerhouse Xbox One X and he promises it will be in the most quiet and efficient way uh, they also use that moment to showcase Hellblade 2 a new game from the Ninja Theory that's being developed for the next Xbox console. Ninja Theory being one of the acquired studios for their Xbox game studios that they're building, Tom. And while Microsoft has revealed the, the design teeth, here, I'm nervous. Sorry, listeners. And It's well, live, don't worry. While Microsoft has revealed the design here, the company is revealing exact specs beyond that. What's been discussed previously, obviously, was it E3? We've got spec drop. Yeah. Uh, I know Adam, the artist, is a fan of Hellblade, uh, the, the first one, so it'd be exciting to play it. Yeah. It's very good. Um, it doesn't like my cup of tea. Yeah, best played with the good set of headphones. Shall I take this next bit of news, or do you want this? You take it, because this is your baby, isn't Two it? Two strikes, and you're on Xbox. In some interesting news, MLB The Show, Sony's exclusive baseball game, will be making its way onto Switch and Xbox. Sony going forward will be making it for Microsoft and Nintendo's console. I am a little perplexed by that because... I mean, Sony are going to make more money. But it's just another exclusive, isn't it? Um, a bit sad about that. And, yeah. And MLB have never been shy about saying to Microsoft or Nintendo, if you want to make... A baseball game of your own, knock yourself out. But only Sony saw the value in it, mm. and I suppose they had to be in on this. They're probably very okay with it, making more money by marking it on three consoles instead of one. But it just seems like a very strange situation, especially when we've had like ESPN baseball games, and we know that that ESPN series can be quite good. Thoughts? Yeah. You're not bothered. I, I really ought to have tried that considering it was a free game of the month a while back. Did you add it to your list? I didn't, no. Oh, the amount of times mate. I forget to do that, I'm terrible. Um, of all the ones, that's good that is. Yeah. Not to worry. Well, what about other alleged oh. exclusives making their way to other consoles? We've heard a rumour of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, haven't we, as well, that, going to um, PC. Uh, Death Talking of Death Stranding, Engine, Death Stranding's already on yeah. the PC. Makes me a bit nervous that they're going to get hold of, essentially, an, a Sony exclusive engine. And on PC, with what PC's like, they're going to rip that open. Yeah. Not that anyone could do anything with it, but is there any secrets under the hood that we don't know about? Is that going to reveal compromises mm. in the game's design? Possibly. When it was on PlayStation and that holds it back on PC? What do you think? I don't know. What do you think John from the wagon thinks about that? I don't think he minds too much. He's just concentrating on 
getting some more vinegar from his those babs for his uh, for his more wine. wine. Yeah, I'll tell you, Tom, <laughs> it's same vinegar, mate. The, not the way it's going down. You need to slow down. Anyway, um, bonus news for the first time. The second time you've announced bonus news. The first time you've got it right. Thank you the very clap. much. I like the clap. There. Live careful, action clap. Because you know what farmers is like. As soon as they hear hands go together, they just stop clapping. They can't help themselves. I know. <laughs> What's <sighs> this bonus news? Luigi's Mansion Three on the subject of me playing that is getting some DLC packs. Wow. Two, two packs are coming in 2020 and they're going to feature uh, new costumes and ghosts for the uh, Scare Scraper multiplayer mode. Both packs are going to cost uh, $9.99 uh, dollars and pounds, I think that's it. All, all multipl- multiplayer centric? or I believe so, but I think the costumes you can use in single player as well. Mm. So yeah, a little bit of bonus news there for any Switch fans. Well, listen in, listeners and farmers in Market Square, did we miss anything? Do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed? Other than the Farmerton masses throwing rocks and pebbles at us, Tom, how would the hardcore listeners, the ones that are listening through their ear holes in the privacy of their own home, how would they get in touch with us? You can uh, message us on Instagram or Twitter, Ooh. as uh, a lot of you do, mainly on Instagram. Uh, and you can email us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Tom, that's the news done. Done and dusted. And as I said, I feel are. like we uh, we did cover the main things that we we sort of missed over last week's illnesses. Oh, Tom, let's not kid ourselves. We probably just missed one of the biggest open worlds <laughs> in gaming, and hopefully the fans will let us know what that is. So we can PS Five Shock Drop releases twenty twenty January. It was announced <laughs> this afternoon while we were drinking more wine, spilling it on ourselves. Anyway, the the Christmas gaming memories feature. So as you guys are, are aware, we're in Farmerton Market Square. Gathers around us on the stalls, carol singers and the whole village. And we mean the whole village is here. It's a beautiful time. It's what I would call, Tom, just a wonderful time to be in Farmerton. Let's gather around the tree we positioned our stage around and shake the presents and see who's got what. So Tom, who's been a good boy? Or girl this year. Let's grab the first prezi. Well, first up. Hang on. Let's hope that's not breakable. And the prezi under the tree and shout out the recipient from the label. First up, who we got? Retro Gamer Thomas. Wow. He gave us presents. We gave him presents. What's he got to He's, say for himself? He uh, goes on to say, it's Before great. Before you start, has he been a good boy or a bad boy? He's been a good boy, of course. Okay. Sends us so, on completion of this, he can this, see... This is my first bit of many more to come. Fan mail. Get ready. The post box runneth over. Okay. So, on completion of this retro gamer, Thomas, if you get PCSO Kemp to wheel you over to Lord Pontlebury, it looks like you've pre-qualified for a tangerine, friend. What's he got to say for himself? It's great to have you fellas all fit and raring to go again. Uh, it's got to be when I got my ZX Spectrum 18, uh, 128K light gun pack back in the oh, 80s. Yes. I was the envy of the estate. I absolutely love that computer and still play one today. No, it's not the original. That was chowed down on one night while watching <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. It had so many good <laughs> lights. such a good egg, isn't he? He had so many good games, uh, light gun games that all the family would play from space shooters to playing bullseye with my dad. So many good memories from the system that got me into gaming in the first place. Hashtag ZX Spectrum. Oh, that's cool. Now, I don't know if it's my memory playing tricks on me. There was a couple of... i tell you what, the ZX Spectrum was one of the first consoles I saw that did, like, themed pack-ins. Mm. I'm sure there was a James Bond pack-in for the Spectrum and there was this light gun pack-in. I reckon they did his I never even realised it had a, a light gun. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah. Um, right. Who's next? I guess I better have a look at this one. Let's have a little look, see what we got here. Different one. What's on the label? Hey! The green wrapping really gave this one away. It's Bo Biloba. Bo Biloba. And what's he got to say? I always remember getting the Super Nintendo, he says. Mario All Stars bundle. Great bundle. Bo Biloba, you don't remember. Well, you do, because we brought this conversation off there. But. Every time I saw a picture of the yellow box, I'd get excited and show my parents. <laughs> Couldn't believe it when I opened that up on Christmas Day. 
jump to 2016 and at TOX1S Toxis, I presume that's your better half, uh, bought it for me again. Best girlfriend ever, right? Hmm. He answered my own question in his own sentence. He doesn't mess about us, by the way. But since then, I've been slowly building the retro collection, and just today, I received a package in the post containing four SNES games from a friend I met through gaming and social media. What a world! What a community! Here, here, Pobalaba, you're certainly a That's star. That's great to hear. Community. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I said back to Pobalaba, such a shared history. I have the same feelings about that yellow box. Uh, great to hear you're reunited, and we wished him Merry Christmas. And he came back and said, of course, such a simple thing, that yellow box bringing so much joy. He says he means the Star Wing box, Starwing box is cool, but that yellow. You know, for years, Tom, while I had the snares, I lived under my bed. And it almost, oh, just see it. It's the one, it's the one console I had as a kid in the box and all that. Yeah. I haven't re-bought, really, as a grown-up. And I... Mm-hmm. That yellow with the little stars on, and Mario with the top hat on. Yeah, yeah. That box is iconic. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Hang on. What we got? Okay, here's your one. Let's shake it near the mic. Who's mm. this one for? The present is small, but it doesn't indicate the value. That does not matter. Doogie McBain. Oh my goodness. Um, he says he I... got a small package. Let's give him a different one. <laughs> shake that one for Doogie. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. CGI of insert present rattle here. That's uh, a joke because we're live on Farmington Square. It's all done. It's real stuff here. Dugan McBain rocks. says, I always get the urge to play Christmas Nights on the Saturn at this time of year. Great little freebie version, that game, with the official Saturn magazine back in the day. Mm-hmm. When I think back to early Christmases, I always reminded me and my brother getting our Sega Mega Drive 2 and Mega Games Pack 2. Mm. We're so excited to play some multiplayer Streets of Rage with the bro. Got it all set up and just so I went to put, plug my controller in. I dropped it in the dog's water pole. <laughs> Typical me. It was still fun watching whilst my controller dried on the radiator. <laughs> ah, the bowl of rice trick for the phone. Probably not known back then. One thing I've got to say about that, Doogie, is he almost treats this podcast like a weekly confessional. Yeah. The other week he was bawling. I don't know what happened the week before that. He, he, he didn't fish outside. He literally had a fishing yeah. area outside his own house and he'd rather play as, our, as mm, the Sega Bass Fishing. I had a little chat with Mr. McBain this week. Did you? Yeah. I hope you I, he, he up was um, you being ill. He he was uh, running a chainsaw, chopping some logs, apparently, to, ready to keep him and the family warm over Christmas. And I told him to just go steady. Did he dry and season the logs, or is he throwing just freshly cut logs on the fire? Mm. <laughs> Game Boy Matt is going to end up with an exploded vat of bloody hot sap in Resin his face. Yeah. All over him. No, I think he's a he's a sensible family man. He will do the right thing. As long as his nose is Arbor, Arbor, what is it? What are you, an arborist? I'm a podcaster. You are. And as we'll make our way down to the farms and uh, village hall later, Tom, your pantomime hero. Of course. Well, you're playing a woman in drag, but there you go. That's the best role in the pantomime. A lot of planes about this evening as well, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> you're making people nervous. Uh, okay. Who have I got? Oh, I'm stoked about this one. Two Finster Gamer. Hoping you have a great Xmas. Lots of love, Mumsy. Wow. Hmm. Let's see what it says here. Has Finster Gamer been a good boy this year? I think so. So he pre qualifies for a tangerine? Of course. Dugan McBain, has he dropped his dogs? Dropped his brand new controller with dogs water bowl? Does he pre qualify for Cole for that or has he been a good enough boy? He gets both. Well, if that wouldn't work out, I'd be glad for the cold. <laughs> uh, Finster Gaming, he's been a good boy. Uh, what's he got to say for himself? My favourite Christmas gaming memory was getting... Brian? Uh, was getting a PlayStation 1 bundle. The rest of Christmas Day pretty much went out the window. Was All that mattered was playing as much Crash Brandicoot. Brandicoot? Brandicoot. <laughs> Get me another Copyright one. Copyright that one. Get me another one, John. Crash Bandicoot as humanly possible. Christmas dinner was gone before it hit the plate so that I could get back on the PlayStation. On another note, The Division is the die-hard of Christmas games. Terrorists, cops, high-rise buildings, and explosive action, all wrapped up in snow and Christmas lights. It's got a solid point there. That game trapped permanently at Christmas. Very clever. I um, I, rem- clever. I remember the trailer for that game uh, where 
it shows like the decay setting in of of this sort of post-apocalyptic New York, I think it is. Um, I didn't. I, I did play the Division One. I thought it was quite good. Um, but I always remember that trailer. I think it's really impressive. I've never played any of them. Do you think I'd like it? It's a, like an online multiplayer shooter, team-based shooter. It's good. If you've got a group of four of you, it's really good fun. It's probably a no then. Definitely a no for you. <laughs> um, as for his PlayStation Christmas She's memories, um, yeah, I've got to agree. The PlayStation 1, me and my brother got um, Christmas. Of, we, we discussed this in the PlayStation special. It's just a, yeah, really nice memories of um, some of the... I think the year after I got Time Crisis, I'm not sure on the um, timeline. Let, let of that. it all blur. Let it all blur into yeah. one. I know it's the mold wine talk, you know. The nostalgia. I tell you what, I, I don't know if it's the mold wine talk. It's absolutely pretty good tonight. Don't do it again. You've been there before. It's every Christmas. I yeah. reckon they're in cahoots. It just feels like a Christmas special, you know. When he hits you with a strong mauled wine. Yeah. Is she, is she a Christmas tradition? There's, yeah. There's a okay. sliding scale of mauled wine versus <laughs> Deb's Bab's attractiveness. And at the apex point, if you're still awake, bad It's things, game time. It, yeah, get me some more. Get out of here. Well, I'll take this next one. No, wait, let me get you the gift. You've shaken these presents about more than enough. Thank you. Barbaro Games. <laughs> now, has he been a good boy or has he been a bad boy? He's nearly been a bad boy because like, I dropped his present. What sort um, of bloke are you? It, he's good. And you're I, I find it hard to be cruel and give him this coal. Uh, the Barbaro Games. Final Fantasy 8. <laughs> Just count the Roman numerals, sir. <laughs> <laughs> will always remind me of Cleverest Christmas. Cleverest man in town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the brains of the operation. World War I.I. <laughs> you know, my favourite one with all the best films. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. I remember asking for Final Fantasy VII that year, but ended up screwing up the Roman numerals. <laughs> 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 Life <laughs> imitating art, li imitating, limitating, I don't know. And received eight and said, wasn't too disappointed at the time, as it pretty much kickstarted my RPG obsession, even if it took me years to complete it. That was a good, that was a good uh, entry from the Barbaro Games. Yeah. Right, who have I got? Who's here? Ah, Tom. Let me have a look at the label. It feels like it might be closed, but anyway, hopefully some... A couple of gaming onesies here because everyone's favourite gaming couple, CJ Nintendo, and, it, yep. and and this time, Chloe has written in, and she says, "So one Christmas when I was younger, I received Super Smash Brothers Melee, the GameCube, uh, excellent. I was so excited. I'd never heard of it, and I loved the idea as soon as I seen it. My parents recorded my reaction." And a few years ago, they told me how they had this bet on. My dad bet that I'd love it, and my mum thought I wouldn't like it. <laughs> my dad won, and every year, he brings it up. Uh, and it's honestly been one of the best presents I've ever gotten. Chloe. Nice. Bit of GameCube memory, sir. Very much. I'm trying to remember what I got for the GameCube at Christmas time. Donkey Konga? No. I never remember there being like a massive Christmas release. But anyway. Well, what did they have? Well, they had a Zelda out Christmas, didn't they? No, it came out in the summer. Mm. Yeah. Great time to be gaming. Good old Nintendo. They know when to release the <laughs> They do. Uh, um, what next? Who we yeah. got next? Harvey Retro. Ooh. What have we got, Harvey Retro? Oh. He says, my most vivid memory of a game Christmas present was wanting Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition on the Sega Mega Drive. I begged for it like Arnie's kid in Jingle All The Way. <laughs> begged for his Turbo Man. Turbo Man. I love when he goes into the thing and 
it's like you got any turbo man left and that guy's just laughing in his face and he's like no but we've got booster his loyal sidekick <laughs> it just takes me back of a memory of uh not a gaming one but we'll talk about it anyways um it's, it's i, wa I it's wanted uh, i wanted um the teenage mutant ninja turtles and all you could get in the the shops was uh, the foot soldiers. <laughs> so I just had a foot soldier, and I'd like, oh yeah, he's ace. The turtles are on the way, eventually. And I was very lucky. I don't know if we share this memory or not. Uh, on no, we shared it with me. I think Farmers and Market Square knows it, but the assembled listeners at home, they don't know. So it. I was very lucky. Um, my my dad's aunt, she went over to uh, Disneyland, in Florida. Um, with uh, with her grandchildren, and um, she brought me back Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, That's and Splinter. Mm. And this was like it must have been. I seem to remember it in my head, like late at night, my dad knocking on bedroom door. He's like, "Auntie, Auntie Wendy's back uh, from America. Do you want to? Because like a big deal back then going to America. It was." Well, um, especially to the rural boys. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, a big, big deal. And um, I came down and I was like, hi, how are you doing all this? She's oh, like, go through that. Don't forget, we still get dressed up in our Sunday best to go to town. <laughs> we do. So. <laughs> We're in our Sunday best tonight. Um, Tough yeah, for so. me and Mario onesie for you. Nice for you to have made Yeah. <laughs> I try. Well, uh, we know we were gaming podcasts yeah. if we didn't wear, you didn't wear that. Anyway, um, she goes, oh, I brought you something from uh, from America. Head through to the living room, and there, laid on the sofa, was said turtles and Splinter. What in real life? No, mate. It's the toys. Oh, the toys. <laughs> Just all spread out. Yeah, like, yeah. What you, what's been keeping you? And uh, yeah, that's a that's a very strong childhood memory. I think. That's a good one. It is. Uh, anyway, we better move on. Oh, sorry. We. are we digress from Harvey Retro's actual story. The halfway. Some yeah, so going in. back, John, he... Um, don't give me any more. He was talking about how he begged for the uh, Mega Drive Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition yeah. like uh, the but Arnie film. He says, I'll, I'll continue. But he goes on to say, but I didn't think I'll get it because it was a whopping 59. That is crazy money. Isn't it when you think you can get the Mega Drive Mini for that yeah. with, I think it might have the said game with it. And 40 other games. It seems expensive now when games are that much, but in the 90s it was insane. Yeah. But despite this, I got it. I was so incredibly happy, I was glued to it for weeks. Ah, the memories, he says. Okay, so I'll awesome, tea time for the rest of the episode. That may mean Debs Bams escapes your clutches. Without a, a yearly visit from me. My gaming space. Right, yes. Here we are. Another great looking. We're not going to open it though, my gaming space. We'll just look at it and shaggle it at the microphone. I think shaggle's a word for shake. You know, I just couldn't think of one at the time. What's he got to say for himself? I used to hunt around for Xmas presents. <laughs> well, I've got a really dark story. I don't know if it should be on there. Save it for the end if you want. Or do you want to do it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't want to bring it up because it's embarrassing for a lot of people. <laughs> I was younger and one year found let's just say <coughs> I very much like my gaming space oh. when looking around except I found some blue items that probably one shouldn't find when one's looking for <laughs> stashes of presents uh, and one year found Jurassic Park Rampage Edition for the Sega Mega Drive in a cupboard I didn't own a Mega Drive and couldn't find one anywhere anyway Big day arrived, says my game in space, and after opening all my presents, I couldn't see Jurassic Park. I was heartbroken, but not as heartbroken as the year I had never received my Mr. Frosty. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Frosty, <laughs> for those who don't know, is a oh, snowman yeah, like, that yeah. crunches ice and you make a slush puppy type drink. Basically, pour squash on it and then you make a cheap slush puppy. It didn't really work if you were a kid, though, because you needed almost like six tons of metric down <laughs> pressure to actually crush this ice. <laughs> It's one of those things that an adult designed for a kid but never even thought to let a kid have a go on. Boxing Day, we all went to my grandparents as my game in space and was lucky enough to have a couple of presents to open for me, uh, to open there for me. The first one, a huge box. I ripped the paper off to find a Sega Mega Drive 2 with the classic six games on one cartridge. Second present was WWE WrestleMania and the final present was 
Jurassic Park. To say I was happy was an understatement. I think the X oh, was what started my love affair with the Sega Mega Drive. What a memory. What a memory. Now, we haven't heard awesome. from this bloke for a while, but he's made his way all the way back from Dubai, Tom. So, no Dubai? Du- no in Dubai. What the, how do you pronounce it? Like you, in a Lincolnshire accent. <laughs> okay. Totally pulling down the idea of where Farmerton is. Dubai Jim. Now, this one's wrapped in uh, gold leaf paper. So, wow. you know, he's a player, is our Dubai Jim. He doesn't look about. He, what's, what Are you going to read this thing out today? He, I will, if that's all right. You knock yourself out. It was, Legally, you need to have sli- slightly more words than me in the podcast. Yes, so that's, that's been written, hasn't that's, it? That's fair. It was 1988, and in love that surely inspired Stingray, my parents retired the vec text. Shall I read it out? Dubai Jim's a man from another decade. One you can you sure type stuff. this stuff, George, but... I unfortunately don't invent the listeners. They, they send in their own memories. It was 1988. <coughs> Imagine if we did invent all of the listeners. And all of these, everything, Farmerton, although Farmerton's very real tonight, was all just a fabrication of your, of your imagination. Maybe in like six years' time, the show will end when you wake up and it's all been a dream. Yeah. Biggest cop out ever of a, of a show. It was 1988, and in a move that surely inspired Stingray, my parents retired the Vectrex from our video shop. Yes, I grew up living above an Aladdin's cave of VHS and Betamax tapes, wrapped, ribboned, and shoved in a Stingray special black sack. There's a man who's bought into the show's lore. This provides endless hours of frustration playing Spike and Mindstorm with his futuristic wireframe graphics to alleviate the moments when playing... Uh, Repot and Chucky Egg on our BBC B got too boring. <laughs> that was, of course, until the following Christmas when a tiny box contained the handheld miracle of the original Game Boy plus Tetris and Super Mario Land arrived. At which point, <laughs> I bet it did, the Vectrex <laughs> heaved a sigh like an abandoned Wally unit and went to play with the crickets. Tom, now, thank you, Dubai Jim, for that. Welcome back to the family. We've missed you. Make sure you stay in regular contact. This is a big one. And the label, Tom. Now he has been a good boy, he has, hasn't he? he Always. He probably qualifies for a rummage in Pontlebury's sack. Maybe he skirts the... Uh, that's a euphemism. Mm. We'll leave it here. It's Christmas. Odd as UK. He skirts the tangerine and the coal, and he gets a dip in the lucky sack. Okay. It happens, doesn't it? does yeah what's he got odd as uk growing up as a lifelong gamer but not having much money christmas was always the main opportunity apart from birthdays to get the latest console or add to the current collection of so many nice christmas gaming memories getting an ill-fated mega cd how dare you or the fantastically violent robocop versus terminator on mega tribe being another my mum always made sure we had great christmases even though money was tight the one that sticks out the most was when i opened up the wrapping on a large box to reveal the SNES Donkey Kong Country pack mm. called the Donkey Kong Country crate. Mm. I defected from Sega in, to Nintendo, wooed by the amazing graphics of Donkey <laughs> Kong Country. Weren't we all? And the fact that the SNES version of Ghouls and Ghosts was one of my all-time faves. Um, and my mum worked the overtime to buy it for me. That was a good Christmas. My mum always made sure we never went without. I'm sure mums, it was the same with you guys. Mums are heroes. Have a great Christmas, guys. And here's to the show going from strength to strength in 2020. Well, we never thought when we started doing this, Tom, we'd be getting doing all the like, mosh. Doing it live. He's getting him mosh. He likes Mumsy. If Ponsabury weren't around, I think others would be moved into the bunker. You reckon? I know so, yeah. I don't technically know how old others is. I presume by this, mid to late 30s, I guess. I guess so. Next up. Retrovision. Did he get a Nick Cone? He did. <laughs> Unlucky. That's 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 a joke to the things that he puts the Stingray's boots on. Okay. It wasn't like he's got hair lice. It's good. Just to clear that up. The rest of Farmerton. Do you want to take this one? Because it sounds too old for me. My, I don't know, Sam, some of the bigger boys words. My most memorable Christmas gift received was in 1987 when I got my Atari XCGS. 
I got it at the age of four on my first game and computer system. Honestly, that is the gift that got me into gaming and shaped my life. 1987 made me the gamer I am today. In 1987, this was my father's idea to teach, to get me a computer, to teach me computing at the age of four. He saw computers as the future, this is what my parents did to me, and adding games with it, he figured it would hold my interest. Little did he know, at the age of four, I would change his basic program from doing simple addition and subtraction problems and change right answers for wrong ones. It took him ten minutes to realise, not only did I change the answers, i.e. two plus two equals seven, but was smart enough to memorise a bunch of answers. No better way to spend the holidays than to play Missile Command to confuse your father with wrong answered math questions. Who needs pre-K when you have that? So, that happened to me. I got a VIC-20 at my first... Apart from my Pong clone, my parents got me a VIC-20. This was an early version of the uh, C64. And I think they thought I was going to be a computer programmer. <laughs> <laughs> All I wanted to do, poor old me, was play games. I had to type most of them in before I got the chance to play them. Uh, and then to follow up the VIC-20, as much as I love this machine, the Atari ST, uh, very much the same thing, except there were games on that and a rabid Stingray scene, so games were the price of a floppy disc. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Wow. We wheeled out a big one for others, Tom. You better bring in this. Because it's it's for a whole family. This one. It's, it's got to be good. It's got to be good value, though. So it's for Daddy Zilla. Daddy Zilla. Here it is, Daddy Zilla. He said, "Glad you're all feeling better. Merry Christmas from the Zillas." So I asked Devin Zilla what his favourite related Christmas memory was. He said he has two. Last year, when he received Godzilla and Ultraman on the year on the Super Famicom, as well as Godzilla Unleashed on the DS. His second is from this year already, was when Mummy Zilla gave him and me an early Christmas present, which we saw, which mm. looks pretty awesome. Very cool. Uh, is the TMNT One Up Arcade Machine? Can we get these here? I, I feel don't like know. I've seen some, but I haven't seen any of these. Prop- we need to get ourselves to Asda. We do. The big one. My personal favourite is, of course, the TMNT Machine, but there is one that also means a lot to me. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, and I never received that special gift of a console. However, my wife, being the wonderful woman she is, <coughs> bought me a brand new Xbox 360. And I Brilliant. finally knew what it what I'd been missing when I got to open up on Christmas morning. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. That's, hey, uh, Tom. That's good. Lapsed. Contributor, KVN.EDM. I remember back to getting my PS2 with burnout. Oh, hang on a minute. It's the Christmas special, Tom. Could have shake his present. Oh, I remember getting. I remember back to getting my PS2 when Burnout with Burnout 3 as a kid. Such awesome memories. Short, but sweet. Who, who would you like, like to pull out next? <laughs> no, well, let me tell you one thing. When the apex is cross. That ends up being quite a long experience. Oh. Yeah, painful. Tech Mike reviews. What's he got? Feels like clothes again. Hopefully it's not one of your used onesies. No, definitely not. <laughs> Tech Mike reviews. The gift I remember getting for Christmas was a Kiwi Green Game Boy Color with Pokemon Gold. I love that game and still do to this day. Just wish I'd kept the Game Boy for my collection. You and me both, Tech Mike. Mm-hmm. I'd love to have. I've only got as far as I'm aware, unless I bought stuff I had that was originally mine, the only surviving machine I have is my Atari ST and my Pong clone. And maybe half a big 20. Mm. Tom. New listener. Mr. Pumpkin. <laughs> is that clap necessary? I don't know. It's fine. It's how we signal like extra news and new listener. <laughs> Mr. Pumpkin over on Twitter. Uh, my fondest memory at Christmas was getting the original PlayStation, plugging it in the main living room TV and seeing that iconic startup logo. I only had the demo that came with the console, but I played the games on it over and over again. Well, can you remember what... There was a T-Rex demo, wasn't there, where yeah. you just mm. kind of moved it, but what... I'm trying to remember what else came with that. Well, I can't remember for the 
Oh, I'll have to have a look I at that later. Very much like Mr. Pumpkin, though. I, uh, I told you before, I went and traded my soul. Only last episode. <laughs> yeah. To get myself a copy of Destruction Dark. <laughs> <laughs> And they've got uh, obviously a PS1, and with that came that demo disc, the immortal demo disc. Everyone remembers the T Rex, I don't remember what games are on it, probably Wipeout. Yeah, I think it might be right. I don't, there. I don't think our America's cousins would have got that, so I don't know if it released. They got it slightly before us, so I don't know if it was ready. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Ridge Racer? I don't know. I, I, now you mentioned that. Wipeout, I think you might have been right, but I'll have a look later. Okay. Well,. In That's a it. rather unprofessional way, he sent us to the bridge, but we're announcing that after the moment he said that he was It's fine. Him. We're live. And we can't cut, so it's making it very difficult. Am I turning on the lights on the tree, or are you? Who's doing the big, the big lights? If you haven't noticed, already on. Ponsoboy's already done that. He told me I was doing it. <laughs> I'll have a word with him. I think that uh, he's the actual paymaster general for the pantomime. You do well. Lionel, Lionel promised me. Lionel promised you a lot of things. Blair and Biggins. Christopher Biggins is in town as well for the. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I thought Biggins was like Rolf. No, he's not like Rolf. He's, he's still going. He's, no, he's still making panto. He's safe. He doesn't need the hitman. One thing I'd say about Biggins, mate, is uh, make sure you keep your eye on your key on your dressing room because there's no smoke without fire. Okay. I don't know what that smoke is yet. <laughs> but, you know, I can make some. Listen, they all came down here. The uh, the, uh, the assembled throng have all started to pay attention. Tom, Tom, get over the lights. Get over the lights. I am. Okay. This is like the assembled I've, I've been... masses of farmerton have suddenly paid attention because they know the format of the show and they know it's listener stingray. When the big man makes a house call. You'd better be ready. Some of Mum's family are coming over, over to the bunker, obviously, for Christmas. Right. And they said their plane's been delayed. But, hey ho, they'll get on the next one. Right, but, you know, we've got a live show to do here. So, these guys got in touch to show us their pick up some Stingray's boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's boot on Instagram or Twitter or email us with questions controllerpodcast.com Tom are you ready because first up in the booth the man the myth the legend Odders UK with a copy of Samurai Showdown on the PS4 it's who we got nice next mate was. only two hours ago as well and he picked it up after seeing the happy console gamer review it nice work and Tarka Brown my goodness I tell you what £2.50 each they are minty fresh yeah they and look very clean as well I can't quite work out if Sonic 1's got a hang tab, but who cares? How do you pick those up for that little amount of money? That's a bargain. Well, unfortunately, Sega pressed those plastic games out like they were buttons. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Don't forget. So. Og, OG Gamer. Og Gamer? It's definitely OG Gamer. New. Booter. Listener. New. Booter. Booter. <laughs> OG Gamer 550 got him him or her we're not sure yet I themselves G Gamer 550 isn't that I think I okay um, so they've got the Playboy the Mansion games on Xbox and PS2 like all box art that really for its time um, yeah oh but his next one he's in again his next one we will read that double appearance that is the bundle I got one Christmas I think the Christmas probably one or two years after getting the original Playstation you know and what? I just remember having an older relative had it already, so I'd played it a little bit, and I was just like, please, please let this present be Time Crisis with the gun, and it was. <laughs> oh, right. But by then, he had resorted to his usual ways of getting this close to the screen and just... This close for an audio podcast. I'm yeah, saying very this close. close. Very close, very, very close. close. Yeah. One thing that makes I like about this is the fact that in America... You have to almost paint the whole Namco G Con orange because someone might try and hold the pencil. <laughs> we don't have that problem here. We don't have that problem here. <coughs> we use a sawn off. We do. Sega Junkie. 
What's he got? Vectrex. He's got a vet. He's got oh, so that's what that was you were talking about. Welcome to the party, pal. He's, <laughs> uh, he's back. He's got all sorts. He's got the light pen. He's got three Vectrexes. I don't know what. He wants one in the bathroom. He wants... Little did he know that we are masters of Zoom. And in that bottom picture, Sega Junk has revealed his wedding photo. Oh. Have a little look. So there he has. Ash's game room, sliding in with one That's of those, a nice box uh, art, fancy box art for Horizon. Fresh, fancy cardboard covers for a 3,000 year old game. Horizon Zero Dawn. PlayStation know how to rebrand the tan to make you buy it six or seven times over. Radbash Gaming up no, next. No, no, no. No double reads. The muscle has said on the Christmas special. That's for theirs. No, he was fighting oh, for the community. Okay. He wasn't fighting for himself. He's not a selfish man. He's a loving, giving guy. OG Gamer got himself original Xbox Duke Pad with Dead or Alive 3, which I believe is a launch game for original Xbox. That actually might be a box of the console Oh, the, box yeah, the console edition. bundle. Like, haven't liked it yet, OG Gamer 550. My apologies. He's yeah. also got uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, now, I Pandora tomorrow. that they re-released those on the PS3. The Splinter Cell yeah, Trilogy. Yeah, I didn't know that. Added to the list. Sega Junkie, back with the Sega Sports Pad. I tried to like it, but then he's disappearing into his back room somewhere. Radbash Gaming picked himself up out of Worlds for the PS4. I didn't. Well, I like the way they've done the, the winking eye or the non-winking eye, as the circle in the middle. Of the I disc. think this is the best elf on the shelf I've ever seen in my life. Next, oh my bite God. my pixel with Vader force choking the elf on the shelf. The best place. Where for are those it. presents? Tear this room apart <laughs> until you find them, and bring me the elf. <laughs> I want him alive. <laughs> Well, Eggmatic Productions. Enigmatic. Egg, enigmatic. Eggmatic. <laughs> eggmatic. You're the designated driver. How much of this mold, mold, very mold, very I've had, very egg, I've had eggnog. Very, very Everything's mold. Wine. Everything's egg, mate. Everything's eggmatic egg. Productions. Anyway. Uh, they've got Die Hard on DVD. Ready for Christmas viewing. Radbash Gaming with yes. some uh, Transformers. Starscream. Is that an original one? It looks like an it old looks toy. Like it's not an old toy. It's uh, like a resin standee of the G1 style star screen. Ah, okay. Radbash Gaming got a haul of some good stuff in there. A Zelda T-shirt linked to the past. Pile, Shrek on Street the GameCube. Fire, whatever it is on the PS3, I see there. My eyes aren't good enough. Sega Junkie up next with Sega Master He's System. Around, is he? Oof. You wanted them. That's You're going to get them fast. Import Sega Master System. Boba Loba. You didn't do us. We always do us. Oh, us self-promoting. <laughs> Join us at the Farmerton Market Square, Boba where Loba. bad things may happen. He mentioned it in his comment, and we see reality here. We see the festive Merry Christmas bobbles. Thought these might bring you and the family some festive cheer. Tons of love, shambles. Do you think everyone in the... Uh, <laughs> Do you think Shambles actually get, normally goes by the name of Shambaloba? And everyone <laughs> in this Xbox community is something Loba. Anyway, what's he got? Maybe. Killer Instinct. Bomberman 2. Uh, My eyes aren't very good. It looks like a Mickey Mouse game. Yeah, and Micro, Micro Machines, Machines 2. 2. Nice. Nice. And Well, uh, next up... At Shambles 11, follow. Hopefully he knows who we are and he's like, oh, wow. Retro Gamer Thomas. When he's not being restrained in the padded cell that he calls He the game is room. the real life Norman Reedus, aka Sam Porter Bridges, aka Retro Postman Thomas. Let me drop a fact bomb on you here. Now he's done his Royal Mail Christmas special and he shared it, so you know, seemingly when he's not strapped in his cell, there's some sort of community service. He's a postman in Lyston. And also Farmerton. And also Farmerton. Hmm. Is that why I never get my Amazon deliveries? Well, you will order gaming stuff. Everything else is fine. Pristine. In fact, he gets five-star ratings <laughs> for his boxes. Well, the woman at the front who does most of the singing is the sole caliber European champion. This sounds like something I've made up, but it's not. From the year 2000. 
for real? I swear to you. This sounds as long like... as retro game with Thomas isn't one. It gives us a little shout out there at the bottom as well. Thank you very much he for that. Does. We always appreciate that. Always. Um, Saturday morning we didn't do gamer. The bag. We didn't do the bag. When do you want to do that? Never. After listener stingray. Not happening now. But we spent all the money on that guy. Maybe in the. Well, maybe in the next thing we're going to have some special. Or the 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 next episode would be a festive special. The the lull between Christmas and New Year episode. Okay. Feature special. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, because yeah, he he's the sort of character who you would see on the screen a lot over that period of time. Okay. All Saturday right. morning gamer. So we've got a whole episode where we've not even asked him to follow the show. We'll just we could we show. could do a bag. No, we show. can't. We can't do the bag at the end. Why? Because we'll be asking each other what we've been playing or what we're hoping to play. Um, next up, Saturday morning gamer got Aero Gauge on the N64. I've never heard of that. It's it looks a, a bit like a. Wipeout game. Yeah, it does look like. In fact, I believe that's exactly what it is. Tom, it's a Christmas special, so let's put the best foot forward. Sharaban. Sharaban. <laughs> He's he? back. Oh. Uh, Virtual Cop Collection. That looks really Japanese cool. as well. Sega Saturn uh, import box. Looks in good nick as well. That. Scan to the left. You got yourself some. <laughs> He'll be holding up the local post <laughs> office with that. Sega, Sega Saturn light gun, won't it? Yeah. Sega Junkie next with a nice copy of Super Metroid on the SNES. That's complete. Yeah, that is. That's Comes nice. Comes the player's that. guide and it's also got the... Little uh, leaflet the advertising other games. Yes. Uh, Rapash Gaming with the follow-up to his G1 collection. He's got Prime and he's got Megatron. Mark.garage.gamers.com The guy who predates the internet. He's currently playing... What's this game? Well, he's, he's going to see Rise of Skywalker in 3D IMAX on Thursday. Wow. Uh, to get him hyped, he decided to buy Fallen Order from a buddy at work, enjoying it so far. I'm did your hoping... buddy not enjoy it? Or did your buddy just need some cash? Or has your buddy finished it? Let us know. Sega Junkie with the death and return of Superman <sighs> on the end. So um, I SNES per- Mega Drive. I personally love that box art. Is that game any good? Because I've always wondered if there is a good Superman game out there. It's okay. It's a sort of okay. Game, so. Next up, Adam the Artist, aka. Any game use Superman with a life bar? It's not that great, is it? Although Superman needs a life bar to be in a video game. Anyway, moving on. What are you yeah. going to tell me? Uh, Comic picture seventy nine. He's here. What's he got here? He's, he wants uh, you all to tag him in his pictures that he sent out. That's, that seems like a fair thing to do, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Ash's game room again. Copy of Dino Crisis 3 on the original Xbox. The Xbox One, as we used to call it. I didn't know there was a Dino Crisis 3. Well, didn't you look off back? Yes, there is. Sega Junkie in again with a copy of Toot Nukem that looks like it's straight out of Stingray's boot. <laughs> Mega Drive written the way it is. Uh, oh, of course, it didn't actually come out, did it? This was that... Uh, Oh my goodness, this is a genuine game. Tech Toy, I believe, with that Brazilian company. Oh uh, yeah. That, uh, I bet that uh, runs at a great pace. <laughs> Sharaban? Sharaban. He's got, got some, uh, some, Alaska, some more Japanese games. Super Alaska. Retro Magna. Oh my goodness gracious me. He, like I, likes old gaming magazines. <laughs> And he's hit the mother load here. Yes, yeah, so I've had to keep your prying fingers away from the collection in the bunker, haven't we? He's got a copy of Mad Dog McCree as well. Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube, just in the corner there. Bite my pixel nose, it's not Christmas until I see Hans Gruber fall off the Nakatomi Plaza. Well. Maybe I should kick you off the top of the... What's the highest building we've got? The church. The church, yeah. yeah so you'd have to go off the top of that. Hot fuzz style. Yeah. See you later. Sega, well. Sega Junkie back with the Panzer Dragoon selection. Hold my empty mauled wine glass. My good God, he's got Panzer Dragoon Saga. Is that an expensive one? Last time I looked, it was 400 quid. <laughs> that was a long what? time ago. I reckon that's probably six, <laughs> 700 bucks now. Wow. Yeah. Radbash Gaming. I've got the first disc. 
came as a demo on the last what? ever copy of the Sega Saturn magazine. Really? And it's just basically the demo is basically disc one of the like a six disc epic. This definitely looks like um, a THQ Nordic game. <laughs> Guiana Sisters Twisted Dreams Out Out Ultimate Edition. Ultimate. Out Owl. Using the word owl as a joke. Very hilarious. Oscar. Avicii Invector. In loving memory of Tom Burley. I'm afraid Tim. Of... Tim. I don't know who he is. I should have been. Thank you for Avicii. the music. Oh, he's that DJ guy? Yeah. He died, sadly. It was quite a while ago. Daddy Zilla, I better read yours out. Give him the full. Because I've had threats. Hang on. Your catchphrase, your only catchphrase, you better do it. What's he doing? Cooking up a storm. A he's re not retro he's not storm. He's forging armour at that temperature no, now. No, <laughs> only a one, two, four. He's got, he's got himself God of War collection. Got himself Jason and the Argonauts. Oblivion. Guitar Hero. So many games. Dante's Inferno. Dragon Age Awakening and 2. Bite My Pixel. Uh, got Firefly, the complete series. I know you're a fan of that, aren't you? Very much. Have you seen it? No. It's on Netflix. Get it watched. Cool Spot and Mortal Kombat. Echo the Dolphin on the Mega Drive. Well, I'm really looking forward to playing some of the Mega well, Drive that's games. A great game. Do you feel I might regret the Mega Drive Mini and wish should have just got a Mega Drive and all the gear? No, no. You're the guy who doesn't like retro. You're the, I've got a you. lot of nostalgia for the Mega Drive. It was my first ever console. For, for Shenmue. I'm not getting that. There's no way I can go back and play that. And they've even modernised it. You're gonna go yeah, but 16 bit, Mini. 16 bit transfers so much better. I and care. I still play Streets of Rage 2 to this day. You'll get wheeled out. Next, next episode on the the one, the episode that we're going to call the one between Christmas and New Year. You're going to be like, oh, I'm playing it non-stop, and you probably are. But when we get to the New Year episode one, and I say to you, oh, what do you think for the, what? Mega Drive, I don't want to talk about it. You're not going to have played it. In fact, aren't you getting Star Wars for Christmas? The game. Yeah. <laughs> that Mega Drive Mini is going to look cool in the gaming room. It's on the shelf. Much like my PlayStation Classic, right? <laughs> no, it's, it, it will get played. Thinking of all the stuff, our Sega stuff I've got, and I've not even had even my waters break for that Mega Drive Mini. I'm not interested. Oh, I like them. I think they're a good idea. They're a good way of introducing to people who don't really play retro into old consoles, I think, as well. To the minimalist, it's a nice way of having a Mega Drive collection without yeah. the tap that goes with it. Why well, space? Like it's space. Like I think um, if you haven't got the space, it's quite a good idea. Just keep stacking them on top of each other. <laughs> Building thought, a new wall. What you thought was the wall, actually, when you get all the games, I was all the Yeah, but yours games. are like four, four deep now. <laughs> the room used to be uh, a good square footage. Now, right move have been round and said no room. Like you need, you need more than four box rooms. Anyway, this. on with this thing that we Retro have to Visions do. Visions got a Nick comb and a copy of Alpha Shield. He must get upset. Eslo and Midna, uh, Robocop on DVD. Or is that this is special VHS? Company. No, it's no. It, it's Arrow it's Media, I think they're called. And Arrow Films, they re-release sort of normally shocky horror Oh, it's uh, Blu-ray as well. Yeah, I think that um, Arrow um, Films also re-released on Blu-ray. A um, They do a new box art for it. And in Little China and loads of like 80s shocky horror uh, Okay. They're quite uh, a collectible, one would say. In fact, in my words to him in the post, I want this so, so bad. Terrified me as a kid, now it's in the top five favourite films of all time. Maybe you'll get it for Christmas. I doubt it. I've only just confessed that, so probably not. Yeah. Sega Junkie, Champions World Class Soccer. He's been in the boot this time. Too much. More too time much. than I've been in Deb. Let's Deb's end that there. House. Kebab Shop. Kebab Shop. Rad Bash Gaming with a with a selection of uh, Xbox One original games. Kebab there. Shop would have been a good save, but it probably ended up not being that good a save. <laughs> Oscat TV, the Unicorn Princess on the Switch. Switch title 200. He's just hit the 200 mark on the Switch games. Click down and read what he promised himself he would do this year. 
My goal at the start of the year, says Oscat, was 100 by December the 31st, which I hit at the start of June. Well, I can vouch for that. I've read enough of them out in the boot uh, with Cat Quest. So I switched that goal to 200. That gaming collection is impressive, Oscat. Sega Junkie, uh, Landstalker. Mm, I'm a Mega Drive. Metric Zelda like gamer. The last one, I can't remember what the sequel was called. Radbash Gaming. Uh, we're moving on, are we? We're moving on. He's got an amiibo there of uh, Animal Crossing and Crash Bandicoot. Just a note to you, Daddy Zilla. He's reading out every single boot this week. He's very Ozcat. scared of you. Today I received my 200 Switch title in the mail. He's, there he is. He's yeah. going to reveal what it is tomorrow, but we've already done that. That's the way the boot works. Oh, look out. Game Boy Matty is racing with concentration. He's got a personal so Mario and as well. He has, yeah. <laughs> um, Everything he's got is personalised. His sofa, what was that other thing that was personalised? Unbelievable. He looks like he's having fun. Bless him. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Mario and Yoshi racing on the track. He's got a Toy Story 4 sweatshirt as well. Sega Junkie. If Alf. I die, can I come back as Game Boy Matty? He looks like he's got a great life. He has, I reckon. Um, Ezlo and Midna, Chrono no, Trigger on the no. Nintendo DS. Sega Junkie. I've done him, Alf, with yes. the Master System. Ezlo Ozcat's gone and got himself a Chrono. Switch Lite. He has. The Pokemon edition. And a premium screen protector. Ezlo and Midna, Dragon Quest Eleven, Echoes of the Elusive Age on the Switch. Comic Pictures. Check out this awesome DC collectible. Um, Xmas themed Wonder Woman that I got from Stingray's boot for a massive <laughs> discount. Ah, oh, and the artist. I hope so, uh, Merry Comic Pictures again putting up his um, before and afters of his Batman and Superman. I love that. I, I really like that print. Nudge, nudge, wing, wing, Adam. Uh, I tell you what, that. That is awesome. I tell you what, my Apple, that, it really, that hand drawing, right, is great. Yeah. But the Apple Pencil just allows you so much more freedom, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's, that picture of Superman, I actually quite his hand-drawn Superman is very good. But then when he composites the two shots together on his... You definitely uh, get the um, different like look of like the dark and the light sort of that's good balance man. between those two. Sharaban? Charaban. Charaban. He's got his Spriggan collection. Sega Junkie again with. Who's that? You can't. James knock, you Buster. Can't knock him for trying. James Buster Douglas knockout boxing. Here Daddy Zilla is. with his very. Exclusive print. That's cool. Uh, that was done by Alan the Artist that features him and Devin. It's one of our Meet the Village series. They look apps. Devin Zilla. Devin Zilla. Let Daddy Zilla let you get a little bit nearer the speaker. Merry Christmas, young man. I hope you're having an absolutely awesome, festive period. Make sure you enjoy Mummy Zilla and Daddy Zilla's time and you thank them for your presence. Uh, Radbash Gaming. Hannibal Lecter. Um, Funko Pop. I believe they're working on a retro Thomas version. Oh, I was well. wondering when that was coming. Oscat TV. Movie. It's not Christmas. Unless you've watched a Snoopy cartoon. <laughs> Oscat TV. What's this? This is his top nine. Hollow Knight. Awesome. I didn't know. I never noticed. I've never seen his collection that he had those um, Final Fantasy X. Comic <laughs> pictures again with a uh, nice picture of Spidey there. That is a good one. Sega Junkie with Master System games. More Master System games. Radbash Gaming. Got himself a PlayStation Store voucher. 360 yeah, yeah. games. What's that PS4 game? The Town of Light. Ozcat TV. Final Fantasy. Whichever Lightning Returns. I can't. My eyes are failing me. It's R doing this outside yeah. in the dark. Um, Ozcat TV with Final Fantasy X, X and, and X2. X2. Gu uh, oh, it's the re no, it's the guide. To the remaster. Harvey Retro with Captain Planet. He's our hero. And the I'll tell you what he's going to do, Tom. He'll take pollution down to zero. He will. <laughs> I was just trying to come back with the rest of the song. I can't remember it. Something about bad guys asunder. They like to loot and plunder. Take it down to zero. I'll confess, I only watched it this morning. Oh, cheating. Uh, Golden Axe <laughs> Trilogy. 
by Sharaban. Very nice. Sega Junkie. Il Re Leon. The Italian variant of the Lion King. That's beautiful. That almost should be a poster in itself. Radbash Gaming. Turtles toy. figurines. He's loving these PlayStation pouches. He's got a smattering of loose Final Fantasy from the PlayStation. Oscat TV. Uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Sword and Shield Store. and a load of Pokemon. Saturday Morning Gamer. Pops. Reading a copy of official US PlayStation magazine. Welcome to the show, Saturday Morning Gamer. Welcome to the boot. Retro Visions. Crazy some Critters and Moon Patrol. Old things there. Uh, Danny Plays, Donkey Konga 2 on the GameCube, Brute Force and Pikachu Plush. Happy Christmas, Danny Plays. Sega Junkie, again, Sonic 3 in 1. Wow, that's... Radbash Gaming. Wait, research. What's this 3 in 1? I've never heard of it. How does that work with the lock-on? Is this genuine? <laughs> I don't know. I Retro Visions got himself a mug. The new 1990 Tandy computers, because there is still no better value. I need that. It's Retro right Gamer in. Thomas with um, chilling at the lodge with a bit of Jack 2 That's on nice. the PS Vita. He's allowed out for good behaviour, and he's allowed to hold <coughs> electronics. Isn't that beautiful? Comic pictures uh, with the pretty much nearly the full cast of um, The Village. You can look at all the... And, and the Inglorious Bar Stewards. Debs Babs. Yeah. Uh, Private Finster. Trace Ray. Trace Ray. Lord Ponsonbury. Free Munzy. The Immortal Stingray. One of the best, if not the best, PCSO Kemper retro <laughs> game of Thomas. And Sunset Road. Sega Junkie. I love that picture. Rule of Rose. Why haven't I, sh why haven't I put that in us? Here we go. Daddy Zilla 80. Look I at can't. that arcade one up cabinet. That there is it excellent. Is. That's full size for Devin Zilla as well. So he's yeah. loving that. That's ace. Look at his face. A great deal had there, I think. Xbox Podder in Tokyo. Week one of the hunt has come to an end in Tokyo. We That's have another week left to find Xbox more. Xbox Podder's brought back his prey. Comic pictures with some nice... Uh, got a flash go, tail. Hang on, go back to Xbox Podder. Three yeah. kettles worth of games he's picked up there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Can we pictures? Yeah. <coughs> when Excuse the me. apex between mauled wine and time. Oh, I've had way too much mauled wine. When they cross. Yeah. That's what I think Deb's Babs looks like. But if you, go back, <laughs> if you go back a couple of posts, you get to see what she really looks like for Madame the Artist. Rather almost forensic like detail of the <laughs> what we're actually dealing with. My game in space. Dragon's Dogma, Uncharted, nice. Nice. Mirror's Edge, good game in my opinion. Yep. Sega Days Junkie. That's actually an overlooked game. Sega Junkie got Shaq Fu on the Final Mega Drive. Comic Zone. Wow. Radbash Gaming. They both came with CD soundtracks. If you've got Comic Zone, you ain't got the CD soundtrack. You ain't got Comic Zone. You ain't got it. Radbash Gaming got a statue of... Time Crisis for the PS3. That looks like... That's an order, ain't it? If you'd have played it, you'd have known. You want a Christmas game? Why don't you download? Why don't you play the game that you downloaded all those months ago? Mm. And do you remember when you promised the fans and me that you'd play it? I don't remember. I think everyone now knows what remember. your words were. The photo mode, <laughs> uh, twenty pound. Oh, we're back. That that's the full turn. Full I remember turn that. Wheel, because next down is the picture yes. of Xbox Podder in his natural habitat. Yes, full turn of the wheel. That, Tom, is all the dips in the boot for our listeners. Don't forget to hashtag Stingray's boot or email us for our pickups to be read out. Now, Tom, the listeners know that now is the time we head into Stingray's boot, but we're going to have to ask the assembled masses to part like the Red Sea. Do you want to be Moses or do you want me to do it? You do it. Right. Open up. He's going to come to... Brian, you know Ray. He'll come in here like a dose of salts. 80, 70, 80 mile an hour. Listen, he'll be going so fast. It will sound like that tarmac. He's getting ripped up so hard it sounds like pebbles. Bashing off the back of a fake mud flap. So you better get out of the way. Imagine if he did that on your face. 
I don't know what it is, Tom, this week. You're going to have to come up with something on the hoof because the assembled masses are waiting for you to tell us what he's been up to this week so we can drive up. Well, like the scene in Jingle All The Way where Arnie secretly gets into that knockoff turbo man factory right <laughs> yes. where they're building all the knockoff turbo mans oh god really that that factory used to be Ray's did it yeah okay well and he made many an action figure in there oh goodness gracious me well he's hmm. but he's here now I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this because the listeners know that I struggle with this when it's me and you in the bunker but in front of Arthur Farmerton if I can and get, a few more. You've had enough mulled wines. If I can get well. through this unscathed, I feel that we're going to end the show well. <sighs> I tell you what, this whole show's very nerve-wracking with all these people. But anyway... Time for a peek in... Don't we you do it, because you know what happened last time, and you know... Maybe, Maybe it's out. foreshadowing. So time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's Boo, what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle for Endor this week. So these are the new release highlights for the week, December 16th to December 22nd, 2019. Listeners, these are out digital, physical, I guess he's here. Springs have stopped. Shake rattled wall. Boots popped. <laughs> He's got a Lambert hanging off his bottom lip. He's wearing a Santa hat, because why not at this point? And he's technically under the drink drive limit because he <laughs> plays it safe. Although, to be fair, he's had a sip of more wine. And I reckon that even a sip of that <laughs> probably put you three points over. Do you want the first yeah. read out? Or? First up, Untitled Goose Game, available on the PS4 and Xbox One now. Uh, <laughs> December 17th mm. it's a lovely morning in the village and you are a horrible goose Untitled Goose Game is a slapstick stealth sandbox I where you stealth what the hell <laughs> where you are a goose let loose on the unsuspecting village make your way around town from people's back gardens to the high street shops to the village green setting up pranks stealing hats honking a lot and generally ruining ruining everyone's day sounds like my plan on the way back to the bunker after another one of these Good man. Although, to be fair, I won't be very stealthy dragging an 18 stone woman round with me. I'm no. Not, I'm, no, she's not coming back to the bunker this time. Oh, Watam, PC, it's PS4, noisy. December 17th. Yeah, kind of saved yourself for that. Two man day, job, though, really, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think I've had that much. Watam. It's a game about the joys of friendship and discovery from the imagination of Keita Takeshi, creator of Katamari Damacy and Nubi Nubi Boy, and developer of Funomina. Do you know what? As you found, a little bit of tipple enables you to speak Japanese almost fluently. Yeah, of course. I might refer, next time we have the Christmas market, I might ask uh, John from the wagon not to call this mulled wine, but to call it Babel Fish. Okay. Okay. The Disguiser of Fate, available on PC December 19th. Winwood's Bird's new game, The Disguiser of Fate, in his, it, well, it's a traditional fancy RPG. I know, I'm God trying. Say. It is a traditional fancy RPG game drifting in an endless dead world for an unknown duration and an unknown mileage. A nameless knight in black armour sets foot on an island where time stops. Here he finds reputedly fate changing mask. After putting on the mask, he's teleported to somewhere strange. It is a noisy city full of flowers and grass. All of this is like a dream for him, plagued by vague memories. Here, he meets a slave maid named Air. Together, they embark on an unknown journey. During the journey, the nameless knight gradually recalls his past world and the reasons why he comes here. That's all in the boot for now. No. Wait. Bonus release. Not bonus release mummy mummy which oh, is your mummy God. mummy oh uh, untitled trio. untitled goose game ok well I'm taking Watamba the <laughs> okay. hand simulator from the Takeshi <laughs> Keita Takeshi okay. poor old disguiser of fate not really had a look in there they've no. the most blurb yeah it sounds like a pretty interesting game it does and it's getting left on the Warner boot carpet of Stingray's Bluebird well, with that, it's time to ask you. 
What are you hoping to play this week? Ooh, me first. Well, um, I'll continue on the PS2 fire rush the NY18. I think it's just FD18. I think I added the NY. I don't know. Made me feel cool. Uh, I'll play some more of that Metal Gear Solid preamble that we talked about at the beginning of the show. I'll definitely play some PSP. Uh, you know when the Ancestors is, this is weird, bear with me you know when Ancestors came out, remember Ancestors? yeah, you made the promise to the listeners these. to play it and I will you will you know I will okay, your money would very much so, as you find out on a weekly basis when Ancestors was first in the boot for when it was coming out on PC Remember, all that time back came out on PC first. Yeah. I went to YouTube to watch it to do some research about it to understand what it was about, and I don't know why, but I, I had this feeling that I would be playing it at Christmas, like a premonition. Deja vu. Yeah. So, in a way, it's destiny. It's not destiny yeah. by Bungie, but it's destiny. Why is no. Why is James left the marketplace? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He had that mad dream. Yeah. He, he said in the dream he went back to the bunker. And then just, like, he just heard explosions. And anyway. Did mum... What are you What are you wearing? That's a noise. That's, that's not loud. Okay. Ah. Run! Run! <laughs> <laughs>